bring on the host, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Hello everyone, I'm Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs, and you are listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio, a rock and roll show all about pets, people, and pop culture. I'm live from Las Vegas, and today we have a show that is jam-packed full of information, so stay right there. Rock Dog Radio. Pets, people, pop culture. Welcome to the show, everyone. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. I'm Sam. I'm your host, and I'm known as the queen of rock and roll dogs. And before we, we talk about anything today on the show, I do have to make a dedication. And I'm dedicating today's show to our furry friend, sweet, sweet Maggie. We've known Maggie almost all of her life. And yesterday, she crossed the Rainbow Bridge. Um, she was just, she had the soul of an angel. It was as simple as that. And we were so lucky to call her a friend. And it really did break our hearts to know that she'd left us. And it was rather sudden. So this is what I want to remind everybody of is, you know, let your dogs up on the couch, give them a lick of your ice cream, cuddle in bed with them and, and stop complaining about dog hair. Because once they're gone, it never feels like you have enough time with them. It never will. So cherish every single moment and we love you sweet Maggie and you were the perfect dog dog radio pets people pop culture so everyone here's the top of the show lots to go on today lots of news Jimmy in fact Jim was just asking me about something and we're actually going to be covering it in the show aren't we Jim we are I'm glad we're going to Bring the topic up because people still need to know certain things. Yes, there's a lot in the news this week, and we've got some great information um, about breeders. That's one thing that um, not not a fan of breeders, as you know. I'm I'm the rescue person, but if you do have to go to a breeder, then you need to do some homework. It is so important to know what kind of a dog you're getting. So I I will advocate for that. If you, you know, people are set, have the heart set on a breeder dog. They just do. And so if we can guide them in the right direction, then we will have done uh, a good job there. Well, if you listen to the show for the first time, welcome to the show. We're glad to have you here. And for all our regular listeners worldwide, by the way, everyone, never know. We might be able to, to have our show on Mars one day, Jim. It could happen. <laughs> well, we asked that last week. I asked if it was like radio waves. Oh, that's right. You did Because radio that. waves live forever and they travel throughout the universe continuously. You never know. I mean, no one thought they were going to go to the moon. So so uh, <laughs> one day you'll hear us. By the way, you can listen to our show on Mars. <laughs> and there are many ways in which you can listen to the show. One of the main ways, of course, is iTunes. iHeartRadio is another very popular app. And we just got on the network, the Sirius XM app called Spoke. So you can find us on there as well. And I was going through our list of of apps that we're on right now, and it's a lot. It's a lot. So you're going to find us quite easily. Just whatever your podcast listening app it is, just search Vegas Rock Dog Radio. You'll find us no problem. Now, our main website is VegasRockDogRadio.com. That's the hub of the show, and you'll see us pop up on Periscope. And of course, you'll find us on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest, Tumblr, Instagram, all those uh, fun social media places. Although Facebook's been a living nightmare this week. Uh, my share button for me to share other people's stuff was it was hit or miss. I noticed that sometimes I didn't have that. Oh, you noticed things. that too? Yeah. Mm. I had a few people. I just said, did anyone notice there's no share button? button? I could share from some pages, not from some pages. Uh, friends I could share, friends I couldn't share. I wanted to share some events my friends were doing. And I thought, what the heck is going on? Well, it, it seems a lot of people are having this problem. I don't know what they're up to. I couldn't even tell you. But it was frustrating when we were so used to sharing information. Now, a lot of people thought it was just me saying, oh, it's just you that doesn't have a share button on my own posts. But no, I couldn't see anybody else's. <laughs> well, the very next day, my share button came back. And a lot of people told me that. Mm. Then my messenger, my notifications button, and 
settings button just disappeared. Does your phone need an update or something? Um, I updated Facebook, but I'm not the only person experiencing it. Lots of people. So, and then the share button went away again in the afternoon. So it was very frustrating yesterday when we were in lie on it so much. It thought I thought start to think to myself, well, if this is the way to go, it's going to go. I'm I'm not impressed. <laughs> I'll focus on my other social media platforms. But as I say, you'll find us on pretty much every single platform that's out there. Uh, what else? Oh, we have a blog. We have a blog, the rock and roll dog dot com, and that's where we do giveaways, reviews of products. We tell you who's coming on the show and we tell you who's been on the show. And that's the rock and roll dog dot com. I don't have a tip of the week. Why don't I have a tip of the week, Jim? Have you not thought of a tip that people need this week or are you swamped with uh, news information? There's lots of news. Are Lo- you distracted? Well, just more focused on the news really. Although Here's a tip. Here's a tip. <laughs> this week, we we rarely leave food out on our kitchen counter, do we, Jim? Rarely. Rarely. Maybe, but I mean maybe a loaf of bread, which we rarely buy a loaf of bread these days. And we had a small butter plate. And there was probably a nub of butter left after we'd made sandwiches or something. And you leave the butter out because you hate cold butter. I can't stand it. So you hate breaking up the bread. Yes. Yes. It ruins the bread. <laughs> so... The next morning, I go to make some toast, and I thought, hmm, where's the butter? There's about a knob of it. We call it a knob of butter in England. It's about, I don't know, an ounce, something like that. And I thought, well, the, the, the plate was there. It looked fairly clean, but there was still something else stuck on the plate. And I thought, has Jim washed it and not washed it well? <laughs> I couldn't. Has he used that much butter on a slice of bread? I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. Then I was on the patio, and I heard a big, clatter in the kitchen. I thought, oh gosh, what on earth is that? So I go in and Mr. Twix is on the floor with a loaf of bread. And Jim had cut the heel off the French bread. So, uh, what do you call the heel? We call the, uh, the end of the bread is the heel. The heel. Oh, you call it heel as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the, he- the heel of the end, there he the was. End. The end of the bread. And he was, he was chomping and chewing down on that thing. Well, of course, I, he wouldn't let me have it. I did get the rest of the bread though. And I thought, how on earth? This is a dog that can jump on your dining room table, but our countertops are so much higher. And I thought, no, this is an impossibility, but I have no idea how he's got up there. Or I I just had no idea. I thought, this is crazy. I know I didn't leave it on the edge, so craziness. Anyway, so (laughs) he threw up, and I thought, well, that's interesting. He threw up on on some bread. It wasn't a lot of bread, but he threw up. That's weird. Then it dawned on me. Somehow he's got up there, and he's licked that butter. And he's had the bread, which is his way of having bread bread and butter, <laughs> even though he can't actually spread butter on a piece of bread. <laughs> it's his way of doing mm-hmm. it. I thought, that's what he's done. But how has he done it? So <laughs> he is a mystery. This dog, it, the only thing, his middle name should be, if there's a will, there's a way. because And he has a memory like you cannot believe this dog. So he now remembers there was bread up there and there was some butter up there. Even though no, there's nothing up there now, he has a memory. Well, what did you find the other day when you went in the kitchen? I walked in the kitchen, and he was up on it, uh, the kitchen breakfast bar countertop, which is higher than the regular countertops. It's really countertops. high. It's really so high. He, he's found a route yeah. up the sofa to the back of the sofa, up Onto to the, the breakfast, breakfast bar, counter, yeah. over down across to the sink counter. Climbing it, through uh, glass lights, uh, lamps, climbing over a big decorative thing from Indonesia, Climbing down past the sink. Yep. He's, he's got this agility course. And where was he? All the way around by the oven. Oh, he's something of thank goodness. Our oven is one of those where the, the knobs are on the front and the rest of ju- it's just a panel we have to press, you know, what do they call that? A press control. pad? Control pad. Scary, isn't it? Now, this is the first time. Well, we're saying like it's the first time. He look, looked at me like, mm, yeah, and. And. What and. Do you think? It's the first time he's done it. Or oh, so we think. Who knows? So, here's my tip Dogs will adopt a new way of getting around the house and getting things that they want to get. <laughs> it's like that cats do that, though, right? They Not do. Dogs. Yes. How do dogs do that? So, puppy proof. We call it baby proof. The house, you know, the furniture's going to have to move. I've moved some of the things on the breakfast counter so he actually can't jump over them. Um, we've put some barriers up, but he just keeps looking up at that counter. Like, mm, 
remember there's some bread and some butter up there i wonder what else is up there so my point is sometimes they'll adopt a new behavior out of the blue and just make your home so safe think of every which way you think they can possibly get into stuff and then just proof it puppy proof it and from then there. they will and they will he is and i kind of like that about his personality i like that he's tenacious he's very tenacious isn't he jim mm -hmm. tenacious he's funny though because to tenacious watch tenacious t to watch him <laughs> yeah tenacious mr t to watch him is quite funny as he figures figures things out or remembers or you say a word so he's new he's got a new toy this week actually we bought one for both him and thornton and she has never been a dog to play with balls frisbees not bothered i mean you can throw a ball and she's like yeah whatever uh so he's adopted both of these toys and it's a squirrel and it's a, it's a, I won't say the brand, but it's a, a hard rubber toy. Treat that squirrel. That he is in love with. Now he knows the word squirrel because we've said it all week. So it's cute when you say, where's your squirrel? And he looks at you like, whoa, yeah, where is my squirrel? And uh, he's as cute as can be. He's actually uh, under my feet right now and he's warming them. <laughs> he's a cute, cute boy. Well, let's get on to some uh, news. I'm going to do it in a different order than I was planning on doing because I can. There you go. Uh, Jim mentioned to me before the show about the Ringling Brothers and the animals, what's going to happen to them. I think someone, you know, a lot of people have not thought beyond that point. Of course, people in animal advocacy have, and, and they've been urging them to please release them to sanctuaries, true sanctuaries. And something popped up on the news yesterday. I mean, I knew, what was, I knew a lot of what was going to happen with them. So it was kind of a bittersweet, it was bittersweet about the circus closing, n n not bittersweet because yay, they're closing, they won't have to well work. What's the rest of the story? And now this is what's, what's going to happen. And I got this um, press release from the Animal Legal Defense Fund. Please find them online, um, aldf.org, aldf.org. They um, it's a huge network of attorneys that work on behalf of animals, and they've had some very successful cases. So here we go. Animal Legal Defense Fund objects to export of former Ringling Circus tigers. So this is specifically the tigers. Today, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service pre-published notice that Feld Entertainment, the multi-billion-dollar parent company uh, corporation of the recently shuttered Ringling Brothers Circus is applying for an Endangered Species Act per <laughs> oh my gosh, isn't that amazing? Endangered Species Act permit to export eight tigers back to a circus in Germany. The Animal Legal Defense Fund strongly opposes Ringling's efforts to condemn these tigers to continued exploitation for entertainment where there are humane options for the endangered animals. The Legal Defense Animal Legal Defense Fund is the nation's preeminent legal advocacy organization for animals and plans to file administrative comments to expose the export permit. Proper insu uh, ish issuance of such a permit requires a demonstration by the applicant that the underlying activity for which the permit is sought enhances the propagation or survival of the species. <laughs> the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has historically taken a controversial pay-to-play approach to the enhancement requirement, often rubber-stamping permits for objectionable uses of endangered species so long as the applicant makes a nominal donation to a conservation program. It is well established that use of tigers in circuses fails to educate the public and has no nexus to, 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 no nexus to legitimate species conservation. In fact, many experts opine that the use of exotic animals for entertainment acts and other traveling shows is harmful to their wildlife counterparts. The curtain has come down on Ringling Brothers and an enlightened public is turning away from the outdated notion that it's acceptable to use endangered species as entertainment props, says Animal Legal Defense Fund Executive Director Stephen Wells. After spending years being carted around in cramped transport cages for 50 weeks of the year, it's time for Ringling and the trainer, Alexander Lacey, to let these tigers live out their lives at a reputable sanctuary where they can experience the space, habitat, and peace they need and deserve. So there's the update. We'll, we will keep following. Uh, I know Stephen Wells from uh, Animal Legal Defense Fund. We've had him on the show before. I'll put a link up to his interview so that you can 
understand and learn a little bit more about what they do. They're a great organization working on behalf of these animals. And it's very, very disappointing. We want them to retire. We want them to, to have some kind of enrichment in their lives where they can feel like they can be a tiger. They can be an elephant. The circus is a dreadful place. Uh, it, it, and it doesn't. And this is not all circuses that are gone. And it, I think people are very confused about what's happened with these circuses. They, they think that somehow the public made them close. Now, indirectly, they did because they learned more. They didn't buy tickets. Attendance was down. Then they said, well, expenses are high. Well, they're high when you don't sell your tickets. They're the same expenses, but they're high when you don't have tickets. The market changed, and they didn't adapt to the changing market. They did not follow the cheese, as we like to say. You follow the cheese. You figure out where the cheese is going. They could have changed their, their format. They totally could have got rid of all the animals. There's nothing wrong in change. I mean, was it arrogance and ignorance and head in the sand? Probably all of those things. The great thing is, is they decided. They decided they had to close down. Well, there's another famous circus that's been going for over 30 years that doesn't use animals. And, you know, there's the model. There's, that's Cirque the du Soleil, yeah. yeah. Wonderful, wonderful show. Wonderful show. Talented acts. Brilliant. My family originate from Barnum and Bailey. The Monkey Men. That's right. So yeah, I'm glad to see it go, even though it's part of my history. They Why did I call them the Monkey Men? I don't know. <laughs> they were still walkers and dancers, and it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter that you know. There's no excuse th for me. No excuse. I don't care. People might say, "Well, they were only dancers." No, they were in and amongst it. They had to have seen it, and that was back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Well, I will keep you updated on that as it progresses. I'm very glad that uh, the D Animal Legal D blah, 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 blah. Sounds like I'm yodeling. Animal Legal Defense Fund is on this. They're a great organization. Definitely donate to them. And actually, this is the time of year their name pops up a lot because it gets hot and they sell a fantastic, and we have two of them, um, sunshade for your car, but they've, they've got a, a PSA basically on the front of it, which is don't leave your dogs in hot cars. You can buy them. I think they were well, all of $20, I think. Worth buying. Get a message out there. And I have a lot of people come up to me and say, where'd you get that from? So I've directed them that way. And that's where the name pops up a lot as soon as the weather starts to get warmer. Well, Jim, let's take a quick break because on the, on the way back from the commercials, we've got even more to talk about. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. With me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Heads. People. Pop culture. At Carl's Jr., not only do we make you happy with our delicious charbroiled burgers, we also make your dogs happy. Come through our drive through with your furry friends and we'll offer them a treat. We love to see their smiling faces. Our website, CarlsJuniorOfLasVegas.com, has a treat in store for its customers, too, with free coupons anytime, so visit us often. Carl's Jr. is a proud and active supporter of animal adoption in our community. You can find us at CarlsJuniorOfLasVegas.com. Pet Scene Magazine is dedicated to Las Vegas pets and the people who love them. It's a source of news and information for pet lovers, as well as offering valuable coupons and specials on pet products and services. Find them online at www.lvpetscene.com or look for them on Facebook. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host. And uh, we've got some more, more news to talk about today. And actually, this is from a past show. We have a fantastic guest, uh, Dina Safiris, come on the show. Remember that? And Dina was great. She was part of uh, dogsdetectcancer.org is their website. And she talked about this brand new puppy that they were bringing in to the organization to train to detect cancer. And that little dog, oh my gosh, was a Labrador, Golden Labrador. Golden Labrador? I think that it was either Golden Retriever or Golden Lab. Lab I think it was a Golden Retriever, L wasn't it? Labrador. Okay. I mean, it was the golden bit I was questioning myself on. <laughs> and that little dog was called Enlo. And Enlo, I watched the video of his first real cancer sample 
sniff test. Oh, he got certified. Well, no, he's dur- he's going through it. He's, he's going he's going through the training right now, and it's fantastic to watch that. And it's done with praise, with with food treats. It's played. It's uh, it's done with the play. Lots and lots and lots of reward training. It's fantastic. That dog just just having fun. That's all. It, I'm having fun. I did this. Yay! I got I got a treat. Yay! I get to play. Yay! I got my toys. Fantastic. I mean, really fantastic training. So it's lovely to see those updates. So you can go over to the website dogsdetectcancer.org or Dogs Detect Cancer on Facebook and, and get those updates. It's great because we know that once that dog is trained, it's going to be able to save lives. Amazing. So that was uh, Dina Safiris that came on the show. Great interview. And I think she has a fundraiser going on right now. She needs to bring more funds in to keep this program strong and growing. So if you'd like to donate, hop on over to her Facebook page. That's where the link is. Now, here's a little story. It's not very often you get to talk about Will Rogers. <laughs> Now, does everybody does everybody know who, who are, who's Will Rogers, Jim? Famous American cowboy singer, actor, benefactor. Benefactor of what? Uh, he was a well. I mean, he was huge in the in the Southern California region. Oh. I mean, we when we go down and gas up the car on our way to L.A., we always get off at Roy Rogers Drive. Yes, we do. We get off at Roy San Roy. Bernardino. So Roy and Will. Will Rogers or Roy Rogers? This is Will Rogers. Oh, oh no, Will that's Roy Rogers. Wait a second. <laughs> Which Roy are we, are we talking about, Roy or Will? Will Rogers. Will Rogers Follies. Ro- okay. Roy Rogers, the actor, the singing cowboy. Okay. Ro- oh no, I'm all. Con- I got. I got my Rogers. Roy confused. Rogers was the cowboy, correct? Yes. Okay. Will Rogers was the he, song he, and dance man. Okay. Well, famous. Hey, that's my whole point. Was how often do you get to mention? Will Rogers in a news a new segment. He was a cowboy too, though. Oh, okay, there we go. They were both cowboys. Now we know. Oh, uh, they were both cowboys. Oh, okay. Well, both actors. Okay. Both singers. But uh, uh, Will was definitely a, a huge stage and uh, screen star. Now he he did. I don't know if he had this this airport named after him or did he own it? <laughs> I don't know. Will Rogers World Airport warns of a pet shipping. Scam. Ah, oh, here we go. Will Rogers was known as Oklahoma's favorite son. Oh, really? That's yeah. quite the title, isn't it? Well, there's an online scam, unfortunately, that has dragged Will Rogers Airport right into it. Uh, airport spokesman Karen Carney says people think they are buying a pet online and pay to have the animal shipped to Will Rogers, only to learn there was no animal at all. Mm, gosh. Scams get crazier, don't they, That Jim? is in Oklahoma City, that airport, by the way. It is? Yeah, where he's from. Named uh, after him because he was famous. There you go. That's lovely, isn't it, to have something named after you? Mm-hmm. Well, Carney says we have people calling that say, my pet is at your airport. Where is it? She says. And she knows of three victims that they've had in the past three uh, past week. So this is a scam that hopefully will get nipped in the bud. But Carney says one of the recent victims used the website uh us best pet dot com and used Western Union to pay the company. The airport put out a PSA about the scam. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm reading right now. Oh, a PSA? Is it a video? Or just a news article? Uh I have a there is a video, the uh, pet adoption scam warning that their local news out there All right. put out. Oh, here we go. So their local news, it says here in the area, called the number on the website to quiz them about the victims of their scam. It didn't go well with the person who answered the phone at asbestpetflyers.com used foul language before hanging up. Oh, how lovely. Anyway, keeping up with these scams, they say is providing to be a huge problem. And the Better Business Bureau states that the authorities move, move one site, get rid of it, and the scammers just put another one up straight away. Here's a big red flag. Anything, actually, that you're going to pay for. That I've s- we almost... Uh, well, we weren't foolish enough, but we, we knew there was a scam. We were, what were we selling? Oh, we were selling that typewriter, the um, Underwood. We have an antique typewriter. And I think we'd put it on Craigslist, and someone said, yeah, well, you're going to send, we'll send the money to Western through Western Union, and you'll, and it was like, oh, this doesn't seem right. This was uh, many, many years ago, and this scammy stuff started online. And uh, so that's one of the red red flags is if they ask you to pay by a, a wire service, Western Union, it's like, uh-uh, no, don't do that. Um, and, of course, um, 
th- again, this leads into that topic of buying animals. Yeah, it's like, oh, don't buy an animal, please. We always try and recommend that you you adopt an animal if you can, because you can avoid all of that. But if you are going to buy from a breeder, of course, you're not going to buy them online because real breeders don't do that. They may have a website, that's it. But you will have to go and see the breeder. Uh, in England, they have uh, a, what do they call it? A, uh, what's the word? A movement basically saying, where's my mom and dad? Which is when you go to a breeder, can I see the mom and the dad? So there are some steps you can take to make sure that you are going to a breeder. You can check online with the um, AKC and, uh, you know, find registered breeders in your area and then follow the steps. And there will be red flags for you that you need to look out for to make sure you are not going to a backyard breeder. You've got to do your research and always consider adopting a dog. So we will put that information out there because, oh, good Lord, it's I swear it's just very frustrating, isn't it? Very frustrating. Um, here's another great story. Well, it didn't start off so great, but it will. It, it has ended up being a great story. There's, a, And I've been following this guy for ages. Uh, he's got a famous cat sanctuary that was destroyed in the war in Aleppo, Syria. People forget, forget about animals in war. They really do. I mean, they're in the fight for their own lives. So, uh, you know, animals end up being a victim as well. And it's call, it was called the Cat House of Ernesto El Gattaro de Aleppo. Alas, Ala, and I think that's how you pronounce his name, A-L-A-A, Ala. I guess. Well, Ala, he started caring for about 20 cats that quickly grew to about 100 within a year. Very easily done when you open up any kind of a sanctuary or a rescue or shelter. Uh, the sanctuary was known as the House of Cats, Ernesto, named after his own pet cat. And there was a garden and a playground for kids, and it was just a great act of kindness and a humanitarian effort made for these animals and it made these headlines all over the world and he said we protect them in this little sanctuary Um, he said after everyone left the country including my own friends these cats have become my friends here so he stayed behind for as long as he could and people call him the catman of aleppo you may have heard that on the news somewhere his full name is mohammed Allah jalil and he was an ambulance driver now, when people fled the city, they left their pets with him, uh, which he had had to be incredibly hard to make that decision. It's got to be so difficult to, I mean. Well, you hear about that part of the world, and, and you don't hear about you know animal wel- welfare as being a high priority. You don't. You really, really don't. But nevertheless, people still love their pets, and if they feel it's a choice of their life, or their, it's just terrible. It's just a horrible spot to be in. But he had this sanctuary, so they left them with him. And uh, this is how he started this sanctuary. But at the end of 2016, the fighting, of course, we all know from the news, got so much worse. And this is when they just started to flee the area. And and people and animals were just dying from just such a high level of bombing. Now, the cat sanctuary was a place where kids could, you know, pay a visit, forget about the war around them as they played with cats, a little respite from everything that was going on around them. Uh, But it was destroyed in the bombing. So when people learned of the bombing of the shelter, that it was gone, they, uh, some of them also realized that their pets had gone with them, with the bombing, and, and just tragic to learn learn of this. Now, Allah, he stayed as long as he could, but there did come a time when he, he and his family had to leave in order to save their own lives. Can you imagine that feeling? Oh, my gosh, like I've taken on the responsibility of these pets. Then the, there was the bombing. I mean, wow, crazy, scary stuff. Now, they fled to Turkey, and although they'd just fled, he had plans immediately to return and raise that sanctuary back from the ruins. That was his goal all along, and tons of people around the world just encouraged him to rebuild, and it did enable him to start planning this new sanctuary upon his return to Aleppo. Now, this year, he traveled back from Turkey to Syria to find a new spot for the sanctuary, and, and the city was safe to go back to? I, or? I, 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 you know, that I don't know the status of because I thought Aleppo was still in a mess. Uh, we don't hear much about it in the news here. It disappeared right now. We had a fair bit of, of coverage, and then all of a sudden it's like no coverage. Uh, he did go back, and 10 of the cats were still around. Surviving on their own? Yep. They were still wow. still at the old location. That in itself is miraculous, but it's an area that obviously they, they were familiar with. Now, he traveled back with a new cat called Ferris and a new dog that he named Hope in memory of one of the dogs who perished in the bombing. Another that was a lovely tribute. 
And uh, life definitely got a lot better for these stray animals since he found a new location. And he didn't waste any time. He started to fill the space with, with much needed supplies. He got a new ambulance, and so that was a big help with, with, with bringing supplies in. And it's been named Ernesto Paradise is the name of the new place. And it certainly is a paradise for stray cats. And they're not stray anymore, and they've got names. It's important to name animals. And he said one of our favorite cats in the ex house of cats Ernesto in Aleppo was recovered today. He said, My joy is immense. Welcome back, honey. So <laughs> another one of the cats came back. He said, that Fantastic. So if you want to learn a little bit more about this sanctuary, and you just have to request to join his Facebook group. I think it's still under uh, uh, I think it's still under Ernesto's Paradise, I think. We'll put that link up on Facebook though. It's good to know that there's hints of civility in places of the world where you think there is none. You d- I do think about animals in war war torn areas. I do think of I don't know what worries me and I don't like it at all is when I read these stories about military coming back and having to leave their dogs. They can't bring their dogs with them. Like, what the heck? I think they're class is equipment, aren't they? I believe so. I don't like that at all. I mean, back from from World War Two, World War One, maybe Britain. If if they were overseas and they they, you know, became friends with an animal, they they, they brought the animal back. There was no question about it. They got on on the planes. They got on the boats with them. They brought them back. Well, they do that with the horses, right? Yes, I think we talked about this before. How many different types mm-hmm. of animals were used in the war? You used pigs and horses and, and dogs. And dogs, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't like to hear that at all. So I don't think there is enough um, news out there to let us know what's going on in these war torn countries and how we can help and who's helping them, like Allah. And I think that's a wonderful thing. We'll we'll keep we'll follow his updates because when you when the, when people just connect with something great that you're doing for animals it's surprising how quickly news travels around the world and before you know it you've got a lot of support it can also work the other way if you're horrible to animals <laughs> that can also go around the world too and uh, I, that's why i do i do like social media <laughs> for many like that video that we talked about yesterday the, the dog one yeah yeah let's let's briefly i won't go into any detail but because it's it's very upsetting and i rarely and you will know this from my facebook page i rarely post graphic videos and images some of them though need to be out there for people to understand what it is that they've been sharing in videos thinking it was cute and funny and one of those things is to see dogs in little dresses and skirts walking on their back legs for such a long period of time on the streets you see it a lot in china it's very upsetting see it's a lot in china it's very very upsetting and the video shows how they are beaten and abused to be on those back legs. I have seen many people, people I know, friends of mine that love animals, who've not seen, uh, well, I, uh, I think they've not questioned, why have they got the dog to do that? And that video shows that it's, I swear, it's a five second clip and it's bothered everybody this week, hasn't it, Jim? Yep. Everybody. Terrible. And they keep coming back to the video and just saying, I just went and hugged my dog so tight because how anyone can do this to an animal and I said well th- for me the purpose of posting that was now you see those cute videos please don't share them because when you share them there's lots of likes they make more videos and we don't want to see those videos happening because the, l- the less attention they get from them hopefully they just stop doing it, it it's terrible so it, was, it was such an upsetting video such an upsetting video which anyone else could perceive as being cute but yeah, we weren't very happy about that, were we, Jim? No, no, it was terrible, disturbing. There were people on on there, though, friends of mine who I know have shared those posts in the past, and they've commented, and, and they've been in shock. So I'm so glad that they know now. They'll no longer share that anymore. We just, gosh, how anyone can be cruel to any animal is beyond me. Well, let's take a quick break, and uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about teacup dogs Mm. (laughs) you listen to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me Sam your host the queen of rock and roll dogs we'll be right back Vegas Rock Dog Radio pets people pop culture welcome to Barking Dog Self Wash and Grooming your one stop shop for all your pets needs we offer premium natural pet foods full service grooming 
and an on-site bakery and boutique. You can choose to self-wash your dog or schedule a luxury pampering with our professional groomers. Visit our cool cat section offering feline food, toys, bedding and litter while the adventurous dog department has everything you need for your outdoor activities. And don't forget Cody's Healing Garden featuring flower, aromatherapy and herbal remedies for pets. Find us at www.barkingdogslv.com and we look forward to seeing you in our neighborhood. Hello, this is Jim and Sam from Vegas Rock Dog. We've been styling dogs and their humans since 2005. And no matter what size your dog is, we can give your best friend the bark and roll look that will make them stand out from the rest of the pack. Vegas Rock Dog has a fantastic collection of tank tops, dresses, sweaters, jackets, collars, and ties for your dog. And for you, the owner, there are rock and roll tanks and tees and great accessories. Wearing Vegas Rock Dog makes you look and feel like a rock star. And that's why everyone loves our gear, including Hollywood celebrities. So grab your leash and go to VegasRockDog.com or find us on Twitter and Facebook at Vegas Rock Dog. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. We're live from Las Vegas. We've got a busy week weekend planned, haven't we, Jim? Yep, a lot of stuff going on. Yep. Holiday weekend. Uh, Straight after this, we're running over to Farrington Productions. Friend of ours, Blair Farrington, has been in town for a while. Well, we met Blair bef- when we lived in Nashville, didn't we, We Jim? auditioned for him yeah. in 1995. For Starlight Express. In the show in the sky. In the show in the sky, that's right, at the Rio. So we auditioned for him, anyway, became friends with him, and we ended up moving to Vegas, and he's been a friend ever since. And he's got this am- this amazing and huge production facility, but his landlord is selling the building. And demolishing it. So today, he's got the sale going on. It can be anything from vintage Vegas stuff to costumes to lighting to audio. <gasps> so excited! We might find something for the studio, Jim. Wonder if my old costume. <laughs> oh my still god! Around. Would that be funny to buy that? <laughs> it was beautiful, though. I mean, how much do you reckon it cost to make that? Because they had a cost, they got a costume department it as well. It was a couple thousand dollars back in 1999. It was T- a lot of money. Tell them what your character was. A 14th century squire boy. Yes, red velvet, poofy hat, red tights, played a flute. We used to call him Strawberry Shortcake. <laughs> but who did you play for, Jim? Sheldon Adelson. No. Sophia Loren. Sophia Loren. Some Hollywood types. Oh, that would be hilarious. If was, if your costume's there, oh my gosh. Uh, that's a, just give it to him. <laughs> it's a beautiful costume, though. So we're heading over there after to see what we can find, whether it's vintage or, or something for the studio. Very exciting. Uh, we're also, well, I am. I'm going over to the documentary with our friend Cole Harrington, director of Pet Fooled. We've talked about this a lot, and now we've got a private showing going on in Vegas this afternoon. Very excited about that. If you still want to go yourself, RSVP to BarkingDogsLV.com. Go on their website, shoot them a quick email, say you'd like to come. It's free, and it's very informative. They're going to show the documentary and a Q&A after. So that's going to be fun, and then you're going to play your show tonight. I am? I am. You are. It's Saturday. (laughs) Already checked out for the weekend. Forgot what I had committed. And if you haven't seen um, Frankie Moreno's show, and that's the show that Jim's in, then what's wrong with you? It's such a good show. You need to head on down to the Golden Nugget, buy a ticket, and have the best time of your life. Well, I want to talk about two more t- two more topics. I want to talk about Jim. Two topics. Two topics. Two topics. And one of them is the teacup dog. There's still a huge demand for these teacup dogs, and it's a term that makes me shudder. I don't like it. It bothers me, as uh, a lot of people are still looking for these teacup-sized dogs, and more than likely they have no idea how a teacup dog is bred. If you want a teacup dog, just go out and buy a guinea pig. Then you'll have a little teacup-sized animal. There you go. Get l- just get naturally small. Well, this is kind of like what you talked about. the, the um, y- You know, we talked about the dogs being made to walk on their hind legs for cute videos. Mm. You know, the what you see at the end isn't always how we get there. There's always, like, some kind of a rhyme or a reason 
to the end result. Yes. And this is kind of a similar yeah, thing. Yeah, there's a whole, yes. It's how they got to be a teacup-sized dog is is not great. Anyway, our friend, Dr. Patrick Mahaney, fantastic veterinarian in L.A., he states that teacup dogs are animals that have been bred to be as small as humanely, or shall we say caninely, possible. Most dogs considered to be teacups weigh five pounds or less. Now, this type of breeding comes with a host of medical problems that most pet parents would be unaware of. Totally unaware of, like you said, Jen, they just see a cute dog. Uh, they pay large sums of money for teacup dogs. We're talking thousands on thousands of dollars. And often they find themselves shelling out even more money to fix all their health issues once they get the dog. First, you may be thinking, how on earth did they get these dogs to be so small? They'll put them at the side of a Coke can, and they're half the size of a Coke can to show you how tiny they are. And they're just minuscule little things. Well, these breeders will take a pair of runts, and they breed them to have litters of tiny dogs. As you know, runts can have birth defects and other medical conditions. Uh, you take two runts and you can see what can happen. So it's the opposite of what a typical show breeder does by picking the strongest dogs yes. and breeding them. They pick the weakest dogs and they start breeding the weakest traits. That's right. And so you'll get a tiny dog, but that has potentially comes with huge problems. Teacup versions tend to be of the smaller breeds, like your Yorkshire Terriers, your Poodles, your Pugs, and of the you know of that kind of ilk. And it's sad to see this type of market for dogs uh, being so popular. Uh, the breeders market them in a way that's, that makes it very appealing to buyers, uh, saying, oh, here are the advantages. And, and, and these are some of the points that they use. They'll say, oh, they won't eat too much. You can go anywhere with them. You have no problem renting a place to live. Uh, they don't require much exercise. They fit in your purse. And this type of breeding comes with certain health issues for these dogs. This list is horrible. I mean, really horrible. Here are the health risks, and lots of veterinarians will warn of these health issues. Heart defects, blindness, collapsing tracheas, seizures, breathing issues, liver shunts, and they come at a huge cost to the person who bought the dog. Now, liver shunt is the in inability for the liver to flush out the toxins, and that can set you back as much as five to $6,000 to treat. And some of these... We may not have a good outcome either. You may, may this may be a lifelong thing that you have to deal with. Now you don't have to be a genius to say to see where an expensive treatment or a surgery can lead you to. And that's right. You know, a lot of these dogs get dumped in shelters and in rescues. We are witness to that here in Las Vegas. It's uh, it's teacups, teacup dogs. It's chihuahuas mainly, and um, blah, 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 pit bulls. There are two breeds that make that are dumped the most in our shelters. Oh, oh. Dumped. I was going to say teacup pit bull. No, I've never seen that. Never seen that. <laughs> and so, and so you can see where expense is a big thing. They'll they'll pay it up front, and then all of a sudden they've got a very sick dog, and uh, forget this. I'm not paying. I've heard so many people say, "Oh, this is my ten thousand dollar dog because that's how much money I spent on them to fix them up." Terrible, really terrible situation to be placed in through not uh, knowing what's going on behind the scenes with these breeders. Now, other issues include. The baby teeth not falling out, they just stay in. Knee problems, water on the brain, blood sugar regulation, and you'll often find that these little teacup breeds are very, very cold, so they're generally wearing sweaters. Now, tiny dogs going under surgery with these medical issues are very difficult to treat. Think about how small they are trying to do surgery on them. Um, I mean, think about this, you know, a fall, say a teeny, teeny, because they have a lot of bone issues, and so they fall off your lap, I mean, that could result in them losing their lives. I mean, it's very dangerous, this type of breeding. Uh, and I have, we have a lot of friends. I had a friend a couple of weeks ago who was reaching out. She she rescues bunnies and, and rehabilitates bunnies. And she was reaching out because she had a friend who was desperate for a specific breed. And she was just trying to prevent her from going to a breeder. So she was saying, rescue friends, can you find this breed anywhere in, the, in, in rescue in town or in the shelter so I can stop her from going to a breeder so, so i know people will be they're just dead set on a certain breed for me i just see a dog i fall in love with it i'm like yay that's my dog that's it it's very very simple for me but some people are very dead set on that and so it comes right back to do your research and and stay away from the teacups if we can get people to stay away from teacups and understand 
the problems that come along with them. Hopefully the breeders won't breed as many. A lot of this started when you think about it with um, Paris Hilton. She's a big animal of it. No one can dispute that. But it was the teeny tiny dogs. It became a fashion thing very, very quickly. And and then next thing you knew, we had... You know, Red carpet, photo op, yeah, I guess dog in a purse. Yeah, and, the, and then the shelters were just flooded with them. And it's very, very sad. Oh, and I think, if I'm not wrong, of, of all of all the rescues, and we have a lot of breed-specific rescues, which I love that idea. Some people criticize it, but I love the idea, and I'll tell you why. Because those people that want a certain breed, they can rescue a certain breed. And I love that idea. We never had a Chihuahua rescue in, oh, gosh, years and years and I years. I don't and ever years recall years. one. I think with, I heard that there's a one that's just started, and I'm thrilled to hear about that because we've got so many in our local shelter. And they're very cute dogs, very, very cute dogs. So if you are going to go to a breeder, do your research. Stay away from the teacups unless you want to keep spending thousands and thousands of dollars and you have your heart broken because you've got a dog that's not well or maybe you can't fix them or, or they don't live as long as you would like them to. Uh, research really will pay off. And make sure you're not paying for a dog online through Western Union <laughs> and flying it to Will Rogers ever. In Oklahoma City. How terrible. What a terrible situation. Uh, I have one last thing, and this I really like. I really like this story. You're going to like this a lot, Jim. Okay. A lot. We need a good story today. We, we do. I have to make sure we that... We had a lot of issues today that we had to... Yeah, there's been a lot of rubbish it. out there. <laughs> a lot of rubbish. Time for a good story to even things out. This is, yes, and that's important that we have uh, a little positive note for the show at the end, most definitely. Uh, and if you are just listening in for the first time, you've just tuned in, you're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Thank you for being here. I'm Sam, the host. I'm also known as the queen of rock and roll dogs. And here we go. This is a great story. Shelter cats get special decorations to show what kind of homes they want. That's the emphasis on what they want, yeah. All shelters and rescues are competing for pet parents to come forward and adopt their dogs and cats and guinea pigs and bunnies. And since social media has been invaluable in spreading the word about pets who need homes, it has also saturated our news feeds. Uh, how many animals do you reckon you see a day on your news feed, Jim? Hundreds. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't even say every other post. It's, I'm going to say it's 99% of my posts are <laughs> all animals being tagged. I'm tagged in so many things. Can we help with this? Can you share that? Can you get the word out as much as you can? It's a lot. It's very overwhelming. Very, very overwhelming. So how on earth are you going to, if you're a rescuer or a shelter, how on earth are you going to stand out from everybody else? And how are you going to convey, for example, a cat's personality through social media you know, to a potential do adopter who comes to the shelter? It, it, think about it. When we started our online business 12 years ago, 13 years ago, people were only just getting comfortable, only just with buying things online. And translating a product to be appealing to someone online is very difficu difficult. So good photography, great descriptions, all those things play a big, big part. And the same thing applies to when you your animals that you're trying to find adopters for online. So how do you make them appealing? How do you make them stand out from the night? Well, you've made suggestions to a lot of the shelters around here to do that too with I have. Know, imagery and, and descriptions. I have. I really have because it some of them listen, some, some of don't. them don't. <laughs> you can try. Keep trying. But a good picture, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. A lot of people, you know, if you're respond to a picture more than a description. That's right. And did you know this? Even more people respond to a picture with a description on the picture, the text on the picture. PowerPoint. No, no. <laughs> That's PowerPoint. No, no, <laughs> just a picture on social media, Jim. Oh. <laughs> Pictures and words together. PowerPoint. Who even uses that anymore? Some people do. Anyway, so where was I going with this? Yes. I do read a lot of the research on social media, the psycho psychology of it, and that's one of them. If the text is actually on the photograph, it is even more impactful. So here we go. I'm, g I'm getting to the story slowly but surely. I'm, I'm getting there, I promise, I promise. So how are we going to uh, stand it out from the crowd? Um, 
there's one shelter that's got a great method, very simple. Lots of people can adopt this, and it's the RSPCA in Leybourne Animal Center. And they have started, and that's in England, they've started decorating the glass doors of each cat enclosure with pictures and funny descriptions. The descriptions come from a cat's perspective. They detail what type of family and home they'd be best suited to and what they're interested in. So Janine Pemberthy, the cattery manager at the RSPCA in Leybourne. Sounds like a cat lady name. It, yes, it does actually, like the cat lady of Pemberthy. <laughs> <laughs> she said, we hope our art project, is what she calls it, will help, help us find new loving homes for all our beautiful cats. We decided to decorate the cat pods to show the type of homes the cats were dreaming of in hopes of persuading more people to stop at their pens and talk to them. Here's an example. A three-year-old cat named Friday is stressed living at the shelter and on his glass door, the staff wrote, I don't want to be here for any more Fridays. Staffers are hoping the message will speak to adopters in a way that, you know, gets them home quickly and how beneficial that would be to get the cat out of the shelter. So it gives a little bit of an urgency on that one. And he says, you know, please, like, no more Fridays. I'm a Friday, but no more Fridays here. I, I'm sick of it. So <laughs> and each message has adopters stopping to read them. That's the key, that they're actually stopping at each little pod to read about the cat because they're funny and they're interesting and it tells you a lot more about their, their personality. It is interesting because otherwise you go, oh yeah, black one, no. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, brown one, no. Mm. Oh, oh yeah, that's one, an no. older dog. Oh yeah, mm. and it's true. It's true, true, true. A so story. I, it's fantastic. They always say that uh, storytelling is so important and anything that we are doing online or in print, the, s the story is where it is at. Now, each message, it has them stopping and reading. It's, it's simple, it's creative, it's effective. It's, it's, a, it's just a great way to get someone's attention. And here's another example. <laughs> I love the names of these cats. Little Kim and Hermione. <laughs> so a rapper and a wizard. <laughs> and they're a pair of two-year-old cool. two cats. They were rescued together. They were a very shy pair, but their bond, and we talked about bonds last week, has helped each of them to come out of their shell and gain some confidence. Their doors read, we want to live together as adopting them together and it helps them make them feel safe in their new home. Like, like please, well, let's not split up, you know, just take the two of us. And I tell you straight away, these cats want to come together. This is something all shelters and rescues can adopt. It is fun. It is creative. It's important to change up what you do in, and how you show your animals to the world. For example, like we said, photography and pets super important if you don't have a photographer reach out to a photographer or a multiple ones and say hey can you photograph for us this weekend can you photograph for us weekend now here's another thing i it's funny i tend to well i recognize photos from certain shelters or rescues because they do them exactly the same way over and over again i do have a tendency to scroll by them i have to say i'm like oh yeah that's from so and so oh yeah that's from so and so it's the same 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 Think about this. Can you change the color of your backdrop? Can you change it for a theme for the season or, or holiday, Valentine's? Something that's a little bit different from what you normally do. Really try and be creative and clap as many eyes as possible on your animals. Because you don't want people scrolling by. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's from so-and-so. And just, I just scroll. It's, it's, a, it's a weird if psychological you thing. be effective without desensitizing Yes. The oh, viewer. you said that perfectly. I am desensitized to it. Yes. I need them to excite me again and go, oh. You well, need tell me about that. To, I don't need you therapy. You need retraining. <laughs> I need therapy. Exactly. Goodness me. I need to get the whole word out. I mean, what, what for example, <laughs> you used some nice pet beds in your photography to to make it look more homely so people can imagine that pet in your home i just think there are so many great ways you can go about it that won't cost money or very very little money uh, but you can reach out to these photographers there there are tons of them that will, will come and help and offer their services and i just think it will make such a difference and get creative with those uh, those descriptions now i'm a big fan of facebook live I feel like the reach is phenomenal right now. And what better way than to actually go live and show show people at your adoption events and in your shelters and in your rescues who who's there. And you can describe their personalities and you can see them on video, make a very big connection with people. 
And as I say, the reach is phenomenal right now. The reach is not so great on regular posts. So adopt the, the Facebook Live. I know lots of people don't want to be on camera. You don't have to be on camera. You can flip it around and, and just focus on the animals, but start utilizing it. Th I mean, this is weekends are when we see adoptions. So I, I would hope to see so many Facebook Lives going on every single weekend from various parts of the world saying, look at, look at these great pets that we've got. I love the idea. I thought it was really fun. And um, what's, what's the word? The congratulations to the success that they've been getting through this, this new simple way of promoting the animals. Uh, I think we're at the end of the show. I'm looking for the word that you're looking for. What do you mean? For the success of the new uh, marketing and promotion. And I don't know what the word is that we're looking for, that you were looking for. I know what it is. It's catastic. <laughs> no, I don't know. They're having catastic results. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you didn't have any flubs this show. Not too many. Really. Pr like pretty good for me. They weren't like memorable like words that we could talk about. No, no. I have been combing through past shows though and finding them, and there are some real gems. Yeah, you need your loopers. What did I say last week? Transportating. <laughs> Transportate. <laughs> it feels actually rolls off the tongue quite nicely though, even though it's not a word. I've just made that up. But transportating was the word that I used. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hey, you know what? That's why I like live radio. You don't have to be perfect. It's fun. We get to be ourselves, and I think that's important, don't you, Jim? I agree. Anything else you want to add? No, we got a busy day today, so we're going to go and... Uh, Actually, we're having two fire hydrants. <laughs> oh, that's right. They're <laughs> coming now as well. Yes, delivered to the house. <laughs> for the uh, 80s hairball. Yeah, they're decorated. For prizes. Our friend Jennifer has... Real fire hydrants, real, real cast iron. Yes, we had out of service. Yeah, Jennifer gave us heavy, very heavy. Jennifer gave us one. She painted it for us for our last fundraiser, and she's giving us two of which one will go into the 80s hairball auction on June the 10th. Come on out, or come up to Vegas, or fly in because it's always a good time in Vegas. You can get your tickets at 80shairball.com. That's the number 80. 80shairball.com and that will be in the auction and the other one is she's painted like a Dalmatian with a red hat on looks like a fire fireman's hat brilliant so yeah well yeah we've got a lot going on this morning and very very grateful for everybody that donates to us very grateful whether it's uh, in the way of money or services gift certificates or items Pam and I know how to turn those around to make a lot of money to help the rescues that we help and there are a lot of them, and we just continue to help them on a uh, weekly basis as much as we possibly can. And we keep adding to that list. <laughs> it's a long list, but we're happy that we have the resources and the creativity through our events to actually help them. Well, remember, Jim, you can help an animal in need. Either rescue, adopt, donate, volunteer, or share their information. Get creative as well. Uh, rescue your next family member and replace the word shop with adopt. Be kind to all animals. And like I said at the top of the show, we dedicated the show to our sweet friend Maggie. And we never feel that we have enough time with them when they pass on. So do bring them up on the couch and, as I said, let them have a good old lick of your ice cream and s let them climb in bed with you. It's really important that you you understand that they're not here for that for that long and enjoy every single moment you possibly can. Thank you, Jim, for being here as usual. It's wonderful. Yes, I have, am very appreciative, and thank you for appreciating that. <laughs> you say the strangest things. <laughs> well, today you've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio, where it's all about pets, people, and pop culture. I'm your host, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. And always kiss your pets good morning and good night, and I'll see you next time. You've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets, people, pop culture. Visit Vegas Rock Dog Radio for more information. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And subscribe on iTunes and iHeartRadio. And remember, give your fur babies a big kiss from me, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs.
You must not rely on the information in this broadcast from our hosts as an alternative to medical advice from your veterinarian. If you have any specific questions about a medical matter regarding your pets, you should consult your veterinarian or specialist. <laughs> 